congressional candidate Michael Cunningham is still in mourning after his wife Gloria was murdered in their family home. A police spokesperson insists that the shocking invasion and murder was targeted and assured concerned community members. This is a nice is mourning the loss of longtime volunteer and advocate Gloria Cunningham. A candlelight vigil was held on school grounds last night in her memory, and the school board will meet later this week to consider and the local meeting. news. Police have arrested 43-year-old Gil Newsom for the alleged murder of Gloria Cunningham in her home last week. The wife of congressional candidate Michael Cunningham was scheduled to testify on Friday as a witness in an armed robbery case against Newsom. Hey, hey. Morning, Harold. Oh, wait. I had to stop and get some essential supplies. Oh. Extra cream, extra sugar, right? Relax, go jackets black. Mm -hmm. Hey. Those new respirators come in? Yep, just picked my way over. Oh, I knew there was a reason I made you my partner. We make a great team. Yes, we do. <laughs> Start upstairs. Huh. Not too bad. That's better than that Vasquez job, remember that? Oh. I'll never be able to look at a guitar the same way again. <laughs> <laughs> So that's him, huh? Michael Cunningham, the politician? Yeah, and that beautiful wife is. Who would go and kill a nice looking lady like that? I don't know. Well, whoever he is, he's gonna do a lot of time. Well, with the right evidence. <laughs> okay, here we go. Like what? <sighs> okay, so, Newsom stops by that afternoon to persuade Gloria not to testify against him, which she refuses. Yeah, smart lady. Except that night, Cunningham goes to a campaign rally. Newsom breaks in, kills Gloria. Yeah, 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 and Cunningham comes home just in time to see Newsom running out of the house and he gets shot. I saw that on the news. Okay, Newsom gets away, but he forgets something. So let me guess, fingerprints. Shoe prints. It was a rainy night. Forensics found shoe prints by the back door. From the same shoes he's wearing later when police question him. Whoa, 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 wait a second. So they got the guy on his sneaker prints? Come on, that's like a bad Cinderella story. Or they got the wrong guy. Think about it. How did Newsom get into the house? I have no idea. There's no signs of forced entry. Yeah, well, where'd the shot come from, genius? <sighs> Looks like he got Michael just as he came around the corner. Poor guy never knew what hit him. Hmm. If they want to lock up this case, they really need to find that murder weapon. Well, maybe the cops already did. Well, the news didn't say. Oh, I hate the drugs. Yeah. Hi. Hey, no rest for the wicked. We gotta drop this by 5.30. Oh, jeez, I didn't realize what time it was. You wanna take off? Drop it off and call it a day, I'll drag your car home. No, I don't want to leave you to finish alone. There's nothing left. Just a black light sweep, a little detailing. We split up, we can get it done in half the time. Are you in a hurry? You got a hat date? Hardly. Just my neighbor. About time Shirley Holmes found her Watson. It's Sierra. She's trying out for a community theater production and needs my help picking out an outfit for the audition. <laughs> <laughs> she wants you as a fashion consultant? And we're running lines. Yeah. Funny guy. It's more like it. Don't wreck her.
Miss St. Clair? Yes. Detective Melissa Parker. Can I ask you a few questions if you're up for it? Yeah, sure. You were inside the house when the fire broke out, is that correct? Yes. Um, I was actually here all afternoon. I'm with the Martin's Cleaning Service. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. I don't see a work van or anything. Oh, no. My partner, Harold Martin, he went to drop off a load at the waste facility. Uh-huh. So you're here alone? I thought so. Can you tell me how the fire started? Not really. I mean, I was finishing up cleaning, and then the next thing I know, the house is filled with fumes and, and smoke. Exactly. Where in the house were you? The living room, which is where I found this. Oh. It was behind a bookcase. Behind a bookcase? Yeah, it was like one of those secret passageway things you see in old movies, but it wasn't. It was just a hidden closet or something. Maybe it's the murder weapon. Why would you say that? Well, the Cunninghams were shot. I mean, someone probably brought it back in there to hide it. You realize it looks pretty incriminating. Are you walking out of here with this? I realize that, but the house was on fire. I had to make a choice. Either leave it there to get destroyed or take it with me and turn it in. I think I made the right move. Did you touch the gun? I don't touch evidence. I learned that back in forensic science. Thank you for your time. Here's my card. Thanks. Do you think I'll be in touch? Not a word about this to anyone. Right. Do you need a ride? Oh, no, my partner's car is here. Actually, the arson team's gonna have to check the place and all the vehicles in the crime scene, so I'll have an officer take you home. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for the ride. You're welcome. Gabby, I'm so glad you're home safe. I'm so sorry I missed the fashion show. It has been a crazy night. I got your text. Are you okay? I was so worried when I didn't hear anything back. I'm fine. Um, I was just, I'm just really wiped. Do you need anything? I mean, how can I help? I just need a long shower and I just want to try to get to sleep. Are you sure? Maybe I could make you some tea. <laughs> Sarah, you really don't have to do that. I want to, if you're up for it. You are going to make a great nurse number two. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you know what's really weird is the gun was on top of the safe and not inside of it. Did someone plant it? And who did it belong to in the first place? Well, maybe the gun belonged to the Cunninghams. I mean, people have guns. Yes. But no matter who it belonged to, why would Newsom stash it in the house? And how would he know about the hidden compartment? That is really random. Maybe someone was trying to frame him. Or help him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you know I'm not a mystery person. I didn't even audition for that Agatha Christie play a few months ago, and I auditioned for everything, so. Hmm. You know, it's hard to tell from the street how bad the damage was from the fire on the inside. But it sure seemed like someone was trying to cover their tracks. Well, at least you got out okay. I don't see anything. It's probably nothing. Just forget about it. I'm just curious. I'm sorry about the noise. I didn't mean to bother you. Um, 
No worries. Here, let me help you. Sorry. Oh, I'm so oh. sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, you? Yeah. Here. Um, let's try this again. Uh, hi, uh, Riley Thomas, your new neighbor in 106. I thought I'd try and move the rest of my stuff in tonight, but I um, guess I overloaded the box a little. <laughs> uh, Gabby St. Clair, I live uh, over here, 105. Oh, nice to meet you. Gabby. Nice to meet you. I'm Sierra. Hi. Sierra, hi. <laughs> I live here too, just down there, in case you need anything. Got a spare stethoscope? Huh? Uh, your outfit. Are you a doctor? A nurse? Oh, <laughs> nurse! I hope. <laughs> um, well, I'd uh, better get these inside. It was nice to meet you too. Have a good night. Yeah, night. the home of congressional candidate Michael Cunningham. Three days ago, Cunningham was the victim of a home invasion in which his wife Gloria was murdered and he was wounded. Cunningham remains in the hospital. While the investigation into the cause of the fire is ongoing, police say it is unrelated to the murder. Unrelated? But what about the gun? Mr. Cunningham thanks everyone who has expressed sympathy for the tragic death of his wife and well wishes for a speedy recovery. Despite this devastating personal tragedy, he will continue his congressional campaign. Polls report that Cunningham's numbers have risen in the days since the murder. Hi, Harold. How you doing? You sleep okay? Sure, yeah. And like I told you before, I'm absolutely fine. It's good to hear. Look, I'm really sorry I wasn't able to get your car back to you last night. Oh, stop. Don't even worry about that. I'm just glad you're okay. Well, do you want me to come by, pick you up, and we'll, we'll go get it right now? Uh, no, no, no. I, I hate to pull you out, you know? You should be resting. You don't have to worry about me. I'm fine, really. Okay, so I'll see you later. I am so sorry I left you in there. There's no way you could have known, Harold. Yeah, but still. Hey, we're good. Good morning. Good morning. I, I'm so sorry about your neighbors. I just don't understand it. How on earth can anyone do such a thing? It's just not right. Did you know them well? The Cunninghams are amongst my dearest friends. Everyone that knew them just thought the world of them both. How long did you know them? I lived next door for years. Oh, gosh, I guess it's been over a decade since they moved in. Hmm. Barbara O'Connor. Oh, Gabby, nice to meet you. I saw you last night in the ambulance. I'm so glad you're okay. Thank you. You in the house? Uh, yeah, I was finishing up cleaning. I'm a crime scene cleaner. Oh, right. I remember seeing the van out front. Wonderful for Michael to have your help, mm. what with everything that he's going through. I was so relieved to see him out of the hospital. The news made it sound like he would be laid up for days. Out of the hospital? Yes. I saw him here last night from my backyard. I was gonna come over to see if he needed anything, but he must have just needed to pick some things up because he didn't stay very long. Do you know? when he was here? I don't, but it wasn't too long before then the alarm went off and then the smoke started. You saw smoke after Michael left? I sure did. It's a good thing he wasn't hanging around. Can you imagine being stuck in that fire? Oh, I mean, no offense, of course. Oh, no, none taken. Um, it was nice meeting you. Likewise. Sinclair, sorry to keep you waiting. What can I do for you? Detective. Hi, um, I was hoping we could discuss the case. The case? I know, sorry. <laughs> it's just, uh, I think I might know who started the fire. Okay. I talked to one of the neighbors, uh, Barbara O'Connor, and, and she said that she saw Michael Cunningham at the house last night, just before the fire started. Let's talk in my office. I spoke to Mrs. O'Connor last night, and the other neighbors too. No one mentioned seeing Michael. 
But it makes sense if you think about it. How's that? There's a hidden gun in the house. It's a pretty good chance it's the murder weapon. We're still waiting on ballistics. But let's say that it is. How did it get behind the bookcase? And how many people would have known about the hidden compartment? Just one. Gloria's murderer. Or an accomplice. We know who Gloria's murderer is. And Gil Newsom's already behind bars. But if Cunningham was there last night, and he did start the fire, it could only be for one reason. You think he burned down his own home to make sure no one found the murder weapon he used to kill his wife, even though he's not a suspect? It's possible. Look, I appreciate you're trying to help, but we've already checked that angle. Besides, Mr. and Mrs. Cunningham had, by all accounts, a loving marriage. And Mr. Cunningham had an alibi for the night of the murder and last night. I mean, he's still at the hospital. What? It's the first thing we checked. He won't be discharged till tomorrow. Whoever Mrs. O'Connor saw wasn't him. No more Nancy Drew, all right? I'll show you Nancy Drew. That's not your line, Gabby. Dr. Walton says, nurse, get my husband on the phone. And then nurse number two says, um... Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Morning, neighbors. Riley, hey. Hi. I thought I'd take a break from unpacking and check out the neighborhood. Well, what can I get you, neighbor? Oh, um... How about a uh, chicken salad on an everything bagel and a black coffee? Oh, black coffee, huh? Well, why don't you have a seat and I will be right back. <laughs> She's a waitress slash actress. Not a nurse. Well, it depends on how her next audition goes. Huh. Wanna sit down? Sure, thanks. <laughs> so? How's the move coming along? Uh, well, I have everything in. Now if we can just figure out where to put it. <laughs> what brings you to town? That is an excellent question. I guess you could say I'm um, between jobs. I thought I'd take some time to recharge and get a fresh start, you know? Must be nice. Uh, what about you? What do you do? I do my best to avoid talking about what I do for as long as possible. What, are you some sort of secret agent? or? Cat burglar, right? I clean crime scenes. Murders, accidents, that sort of thing. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you're... You're serious? For about five years now. Yeah, it's a real icebreaker on first dates. Uh, no, no, I, I was thinking that... That it's a weird way to make a living, that uh, I must have a strong stomach. Or my favorite, at least I don't just take my work home with me. I was thinking you must be a very caring person. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, sure. My partner. <laughs> Hi, Harold. Slow down, Harold. That doesn't make any... What? Where are you? Okay, don't worry, I'm on my way. Is this everything okay? The police just brought my partner Harold in for questioning. I, I, I have to go see him. Hey, you seem really upset. Why, why don't you let me drive you? I, I don't know. No, it's, it's fine. Honestly, I'm right there. sure it's all just a formality. Right. Routine questioning. Yeah. All right. Deep breaths. It's all gonna be fine. You'll feel better once you get some more information. I hope so. I'll wait out here. Thank you for driving and everything. Of course. Hi, I'm here to see Harold Martin. Go ahead and sign in. Thank you. I don't understand. Why would the police question you about burning the house down? It doesn't make any sense. It's not entirely true.
when I was in high school, I sort of got mixed up with the wrong crowd. We were all out one night. We were all talking about what we were going to do, that kind of thing. And I didn't take it seriously. Next thing I know, they break into this rich guy's house. They start a fire and half his house burns down. And I didn't even get out of the car. But I was there. So they charged me as an accessory. Harold. Jeez. I never knew. Well, it's not something I like to talk about. Yeah, I told the cops I knew you were in there. I would never do anything to hurt you. I... You know that. I... We're family. Of course. I would never in a million years think you're responsible for this. Well, I wish the cops agreed. Once a felon, always a felon. In their eyes. Wait. You couldn't have done it. You were making a job at the incinerator. There was... There was terrible traffic on the highway. By the time I got to the waste plant, it was almost seven. I mean, Chuck was closing up. He let me do the dump, but that was that was long after the fire started. Traffic isn't much of an alibi. We'll figure this out, Harold. I know we will. I hope so. I hope so. I've got two or three more reports before I can head down. You don't have to stick around if you don't want to. Oh, it's no problem. I'm really sorry to hear what's happening with your partner. I don't understand how he's still here. How can they hold him for something that happened 30 years ago? Well, legally, they can keep him for questioning for up to 48 hours. But after that... I mean, technically, yes, but... How did you know that? Oh, detective. They brought in my partner, Harold, for questioning. And unless you'd like to join him, I suggest you stay in your lane. But he couldn't have set that fire. He knew I was in the house. The guy's like a father to me. Maybe you don't know him as well as you think. What is that supposed to mean? Gabby, what skulls isn't helping. No. If you don't have probable cause, you have to release Harold. I'm not leaving here without him. All right, how about this? We just finished the search in Mr. Martin's vehicle. In the trunk, we found gallons of a volatile substance. We use tons of solvents in our business. I'm sure that's what it is. Wait! I can explain it. Whatever it is, I can explain I am not interested in any more of your explanations. I only care about evidence. And until my team tells me that the substance in your partner's car wasn't the accelerant in that fire, he's still my primary suspect. End of story. I know what all of our chemicals smell like, and that's not what I smelled that night. You want to help your friend? Get him a good lawyer. Someone else started that fire. Okay. Who? I don't know. Cunningham? You think Cunningham burned down his own home? If he was trying to cover up the murder of his wife? Sure. But the police have the shooter in custody already. It's not Cunningham. All I know is, is that Harold didn't start that fire. And I'm not letting him go down for it. Cunningham's a politician. Gabby, very... Powerful people want to see him elected. What people? That's the idea. Not to know. Just because someone has powerful friends doesn't mean you get away with murder. And if proving Harold's innocence means busting Cunningham, so be it. But what if Cunningham's being set up? Don't defend him. <laughs> I'm not defending him. I'm just keeping all the cards on the table. <laughs> you know, Riley, I really appreciate your help. But I really shouldn't be bothering you with this. You have plenty to worry about with your move and all. I, I'm here because I want to help. That's exactly it. Why do you want to? You hardly know me. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you felt that way.
Riley, I'm, I'm sorry about coming off harsh in the car towards you. It's just been a crazy couple of days. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry if you feel like I was butting in your business. I just want to help. I appreciate that. I do. I guess I'm just not used to the attention. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I uh, gotta say, I even had a little fun being your chauffeur today. Hmm. We should do it again sometime. Under better circumstances, of course. Agreed. <laughs> I really needed this. Thank you for getting me out of the house. Oh, don't thank me, thank Ender. It was his idea. <laughs> thank you, Ender. <laughs> Ooh, did you know that that fancy museum is on the site of an old grain mill? Huh. Carol told me about this wicked industrial accident that was there. Well, you have got to stop talking about that stuff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no more work talk, okay. Should we talk about boys? Maybe one in particular? Who? Riley? <laughs> no, there's not much to report. Oh, not much to report yet. Sierra, the eternal optimist. <laughs> That's what my mom always used to say about me. <laughs> oh, speaking of moms, how's yeah. yours? Um, good, I guess. I think she's kind of lonely. I mean, I'd like to spend some more time with her, but I have to keep working so I can help out financially. That sounds really hard. Yeah, well, once this whole mess with Harold is straightened out, I can maybe spend a weekend with her. How are things with Harold? Any big breaks? Well, not really. I'm not gonna stop trying, though. I lost my dad. I'm not going to lose another father figure. Do you have a plan? I was hoping you would ask. I was wondering if you could do me a favor. Thanks for doing this, Sierra. Happy to help. I wanted to do some character research anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really think Cunningham murdered his wife? I don't know. But there's definitely something fishy about that guy. I can feel it. How does Riley feel? Hmm. Let's just say there's a reason he wasn't invited. Yeah, dinner and a movie's a way better first date. <laughs> <sighs> Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. lot of press out there, Mr. Cunningham. Are you sure you don't want to go out the back? I should make a statement. Is it me, or is Cunningham kind of hot in person? <laughs> what? I'm just saying. Come on. How can I help you? Riley Thomas. I'm here to see Harold Martin. Down this way. This is 137, 138, 139. This has got to be it. Oh, here it is. OK. Yeah. I'll be right there.
help you ladies with something. Hi. Um, we have a patient who left her readers in the cafeteria this morning. Just uh, wanted to check lost and found real quick. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Bugledorf. She really needs those readers. Yeah. You need to read. Mm-hmm. Can you come back later? I gotta go help out at this Cunningham press conference. Ugh. We're processing her discharge paperwork now. We would be ever so grateful. I mean, um, Mrs. Bugledorf mm -hmm. would be. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Bugledorf, huh? <laughs> Sounds made up, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Make it quick. Close the door behind you when you go. The Oscar goes too. Oh my god. <laughs> Gabby? Riley, what are you doing here? I was about to ask you the same thing. I'm here to see Parker. Cunningham wasn't at the hospital when the fire started. Wait, what are you talking about? Sierra and I went to the hospital this morning. We found this footage on the security camera from the night of the fire. Wait, they just gave you this? Check out the time. Cunningham left the hospital when the fire started. How long was he gone? That's an excellent question. Look, here he comes. After the fire started. He was gone the whole time. Well, it doesn't mean he started the fire. Sure, but he could have. Or he was meeting the person who started it. That would give us reasonable doubt with their case against Harold. We just wiped to show this to Parker right away. I assume you had the hospital's permission to look at their security files. No one said I couldn't. And this is the evidence we need to free Harold. No, it isn't. If you show that footage to Parker, not only will he not be able to use it, but you could be arrested on what I'm going to assume are multiple charges. But Harold is innocent, and this practically proves it. You can't help him if you're in a cell next to him. Since when did you become an expert on what's best for Harold? About an hour ago. That's why I'm here. I'm taking his case. His case? So, now you're a lawyer? That's what it says in my diploma. <laughs> but you never said anything. You said you were in between jobs. Uh, that was true. At the time. I thought maybe I was ready to move on to something else, something different. But this seems like an emergency. I want to help. You think you can? I'll do my best. But meanwhile, don't show that video to Parker. We have to find some other way to verify that Cunningham wasn't there. What do you propose we do? I'll head back to the hospital. Ask around and see what I can figure out. I'll go with you. And let's not have you back there again today. <laughs> Why don't you talk to that neighbor again? Confirm it was Cunningham that she saw that night. OK. I'll see you later. Oh, hey there. Gabby, right? That's right. Yes, sir. Uh, it's nice to see you again. I was wondering if we could chat. Well, sure. Such a wonderful day. Let's have a seat in my patio. Can I get you something to drink? Sure. <laughs> Great. All right, oh. here we are. Thank you. Yes. I really appreciate you speaking with me again, Barbara. Oh, yes, of course. Anything I can do to help. I want whoever's responsible for this to get the punishment they deserve. Same here. Mm. Now, you said that Michael was at the house when the fire started. Mm. I was uh, back here having a glass of wine, and I heard someone next door pull up, and I knew nobody was home, so I thought I'd go check out who it was. And you're positive that it was Michael? Absolutely. I recognize his voice. He was on his phone. Do you know who he was talking to? I don't, but he sounded upset. Something about never quitting no matter what. I assume it was about his campaign. OK. And then he went into the house? Well, now that you mention it, no, he went into the garage. You sound surprised by that. Well, I just don't know why he would go in there. I really don't know what's in there except for his old gas lawnmower. A gas lawnmower? Ugh. Gloria would not set foot in that garage because of the gasoline smell. That old clunker with all those rusty cans, she hated all of it. Would complain about it to anyone who'd listen. 
I'm going to miss her so much. You know, I bet you two would have been friends. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You both have that same vivacious spirit about you. <laughs> well, thank you for the compliment. And the lemonade. Thank you for coming. We just can't seem to stop running into each other. Maybe the universe is trying to tell us something. What are you doing at the neighbor's place? What are you doing following me? Really? Police business. Now back to what you're doing here? I just had a few questions. I already told you. There's no way she saw Cunningham that night. What about the arson report? Did you find out what spread the fire so quickly? You know I can't discuss this investigation with you, Gabby. And you can't keep interfering with it. Maybe if you would talk to Barbara, I wouldn't have to. This is your last warning. I don't want to have to take you in. An old lawnmower. That's your smoking gun? It makes complete sense. Cunningham used the gasoline to spread the fire. With our hard evidence, it's still a maybe. And I'm pretty sure we're not welcome anywhere near Cunningham's or Connor's after you're running with Barker. Yeah. Did you find anything at the hospital? Uh, all I got was lectures on patient confidentiality. Okay, so the only evidence we have is security tapes we can't use. As Harold's attorney, there is a chance I could subpoena those tapes. It wouldn't be easy. It's a whole host of privacy issues. And when Cunningham finds out, he'll take it to court. He'll be up to a judge. That could take forever. What is it? Nothing. I, I thought I'd just... Never mind. Sorry. Um, you're saying security tapes. Well, if we can't get the tapes, maybe we can find another way. Such as? Like you said, get the lawyer. Let's go see Newsom. Gabby St. Clair and Riley Thomas to see Gil Newsom. One moment, please. This is a bad idea, Gabby. The police arrested Gil Newsom for Gloria's murder. But he said all along he was innocent. <laughs> they all say that. But what if it's true? What about what Detective Parker said? Hmm? About you interfering? Relax. I've got a great lawyer. <laughs> You guys just want to step to my right over here? Sure. BC 150 to Central, jail doors. You guys left 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Who are you? Mr. Newsom, I'm Riley Thomas. This is Gabby Sinclair. I represent Harold Martin. Who? My client has been accused of setting fire to the house of Michael and Gloria Cunningham. So you want to pin that on me too? Well, I hate to disappoint you, but I've got a fantastic alibi. We'd like to discuss with you the night that Gloria Cunningham was murdered. Look, I told the cops, and now I'm telling you, I never touched her. Mr. Cunningham claims you came to his house and threatened his wife. He's lying. I just wanted to talk to her. The police also have forensic evidence placing you at the scene. What? My fingerprints at the front door? I already admitted I was there. That's a waste of time. By the way, Gil, uh, the police found the murder weapon. It's not official. They haven't released the news yet. Not until they get a match in the print. How long is that gonna take? Well, it's, it's hard to say. It's a big case, so um, they don't want any slip ups.
Yeah. So, um, what did you want to talk about with Gloria Cunningham when you went to their house? I was out on bail, and I figured if I could explain to her, you know, what really happened, then maybe she wouldn't have to testify after all. Are you saying you didn't rob that convenience store? They arrested me for armed robbery. That's a big step up when it comes to serving time. And it's only because that lady told them I had a gun. I don't even own a gun. Worst they could get me for was shoplifting. So what did you do at the house? When I got to the door, I could hear yelling inside like they were having a big fight. I rang the bell, the husband answers. And you know, he looked real ticked off, you know, like, like he was gonna take a swing at me even before I opened my mouth. So what did you do? I told him who I was. Asked to talk to his wife. He said beat it before he calls the cops. And did you leave then? Yes and no. I mean, like, I could hear them start up arguing again, and I didn't want any piece of that. So is that why they found your footprints beneath their bedroom window? You went around back to, to listen? Did you hear what they were arguing about? Not specifically, no. And I didn't want to stick around to find out. You know, she was really going off on him. Wait, Gloria was mad at Michael? Oh, yeah. Between the two of them, she was way scarier. <laughs> I would not want to be that guy. So Gloria was upset with Michael. Really upset. And maybe it wasn't such a loving marriage after all. Hmm. Wait a minute. When did Parker confirm the gun you found was the murder weapon? No, she didn't. But you just told Newsom. <laughs> I was hoping to get a reaction. I mean, the last thing a killer wants to hear is that fingerprints were found on the murder weapon. You were testing her? Mm-hmm. Well, that definitely wasn't a reaction of a guilty man. I didn't think so either. I'm pretty sure he wasn't involved. So now what? I don't know. Can I get you guys anything else? No, thanks. No. <laughs> you know, this place has really grown on me. Oh, yeah? Good food, great service, mm. good company. <laughs> What's not to love? I used to live at that corner table over there back in grad school. Oh, yeah? What do you study? Forensic science. Right, right, right. The uh, job you avoid talking about for as long as possible. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I tend to come on a little strong in the subject of career choice. Mm. Maybe a little. Mm. Well, I appreciate what you said about caring. I hadn't gotten that before. I meant it. You know, it wasn't exactly my first choice. I wanted to work in law enforcement. But um, I had to drop out of my last semester. My dad passed. Cancer. I'm sorry. Thanks. Well, dad didn't have life insurance, and uh, mom needed help paying the bills. So uh, one of my professors introduced me to Harold, and we took to each other right away. Um, I learned the ropes of his business, and um, he showed me how I could use the things I learned in school to help people. And here I am, five years later. You, know, you can always go back, finish your degree, get a job in the force. Eh, Harold made me his partner this year. Huh. And I don't mind the work. I make decent money so I can help my mom every month. Sounds like you're working hard for everyone else. <laughs> what about yourself? It's too late to change. It's never too late. Not when it comes to something as important as your own happiness. Otherwise, you'll always look back and wonder. Wonder what? Um, we should probably go. I still gotta talk to Harold and yeah. a bunch of other stuff to do. Sure. All right. Parker, Mary, what you got? You sure it's the murder weapon? Ballistics checked out. Okay, yeah, email me the report. Thanks. We may be able to prove that Cunningham wasn't at the hospital when the fire started. 
It would be a huge step towards clearing you. Yeah, but what about the solvents? The arson investigation showed that there was an accelerant burn pattern at the scene. But we're still waiting on the chemical reports to determine what the residue was. Oh, what was I doing driving with that stuff in my trunk? I should have unloaded it at the shop. It's just circumstantial evidence. It won't hold up. We're going to get you out soon. It was dumb. It was a lazy mistake. What's the very first thing I taught you when I hired you? Number one rule. Always buy the book. I even told Cunningham that when he emailed me. I said, you got nothing to worry about. We're total professionals. Email? You never actually spoke. People can book online. When did you get the email? Uh, I don't know. It was that night, because I remember hearing about his wife on the news. I mean, the police usually contact us when it's a crime scene, not the family, and certainly not the victim. I don't remember, but it is kind of weird. Connie was in the hospital that night, getting treated for a gunshot wound. Well, somebody else emailed me. Well, it'd have to be an email address in Cunningham's name and access to a bank account to make the payment. Somebody he trusted. It could be someone he works with, a campaign staffer. Powerful people. Or they just checked online. Well, we are the top-rated cleanup crew. Hey, we earned every single one of those five-star reviews. Look, let me reach out to some people I know, see what I can find out about Cunningham's campaign. Can I help you in any way? No, I gotta do this alone. Hang in there, Harold. We're getting close. <sighs> I'm sure of it. He's just trying to help. What's wrong with that? I don't know. Oh, gee, let me see. A really cute lawyer guy with a great sense of humor who wants to get Harold out of jail for no charge. Oh, you're right. He probably works for the cartel. Hmm. I just would feel more comfortable if I knew his story. The guy doesn't talk about himself at all. Well, there's plenty here on the internet. Look. Grew up on the West Coast. Okay. Top of his class in law school. Worked at a hot shop firm in the city. Which he left months ago, and there's nothing about him since. The guy doesn't even have socials. <laughs> okay, so maybe he's not exactly on the grid. Maybe he's been off saving the rainforest. Hmm. Or maybe he gained mysterious superpowers, and he's been off fighting crime in a mask and a cape and one of those tight little spandex suits. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you liked <gasps> mysteries. I like solving mysteries. There's a big difference. Well, he's probably just into you. You're not helping, Sierra. <sighs> Stop searching. Fine. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Um, I was thinking of making my mom's chicken piccata tonight and wondered if you might want to Swing by. For dinner? Yeah. Did you want to discuss the case? Actually, I was kind of hoping not to discuss the case. If that's okay. Oh. Well, uh... Um... She'll be there! <laughs> um, thanks, Sierra. Um, 7.30, okay? How can I say no? Great. I look this way. <laughs> Told you! I am just going over there to check out his apartment. Tell yourself whatever you need to, girl. Just let me help you pick out an outfit. Okay, I was thinking the blue tunic thing that we got at that vintage store that you dragged me to. I have something a little spicier in mind. <laughs> Hi. Um. What? Oh, no, nothing. I, you look really nice. Oh, thanks. What you got there? Uh, wine. The guy at the store recommended it. You know, chicken. Great. Well, um, let's open it up. Come on in. Hmm. Looks like you're making some good progress. <laughs> You've been keeping me pretty busy. Hmm. Oh, I uh, got us a table by the kitchen. Hope that's okay. Yeah, perfect. So, how's the recharging going? <laughs> you kidding? Look around. Barely had time to unpack. Never mind recharge. Sorry about that. Ah, it's all right. I sign up for it. 
What, a murder mystery? Well, I am a lawyer. It's not exactly unfamiliar territory. <laughs> Have you worked on many murder cases before? <laughs> I thought we weren't talking about the case tonight. I'm just making conversation. Mm-hmm. I mean, you mentioned that you were looking for a fresh start, and I was just wondering, you know, a fresh start from what? Oh, okay, so now it's an interrogation. It doesn't have to be. Let's just say there are some things in my past which I'd rather leave in the past. No burning buildings or dead bodies, I promise. Okay. I guess everyone's entitled to one or two secrets. Mm. Mm. Just one more question for you, though. <laughs> Shoot. A picture over there. When did you go to the rainforest? Now that is a good story. I'd like to hear it. To a night off. A night off? Hmm. Good choice. Thank you. You know, I think this sauce could use one more lemon, but would you possibly? Yeah, I have one. When I get back, I want to hear that story. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> This is him? There's no doubt about it. Cunningham was having an affair, and I know who with. Candace Mills, his campaign manager. Maybe this will prove it. Prove what? That she had something to do with the murder, too. Just because Cunningham's a cheater doesn't mean he's a killer. And it certainly doesn't mean that this lady's involved, too. But he had motive and opportunity. Uh, Cunningham was shot as well. By his accomplice, Candace Mills. She had motive, too. She wants Michael, and she wants to win the election. Uh, Candace Mills wouldn't help Cunningham kill his wife and then just turn around and give you these photos. She'd be incriminating herself. But... But? I spoke to those people about Cunningham's campaign. Cunningham has been rumored to be a bit of a ladies' man for a while now, and they have been doing whatever they can to keep a lid on it. Maybe whoever sent you these photos is playing dirty politics. Or maybe it's another woman. Maybe. Either way, I'm not exactly in love with the fact they know where you live. I'm a big girl, I can take care of myself. Besides, whoever left these gave us a huge clue. If you say so. Are you gonna get that? Nope, definitely not. I don't suppose it'd do any good to suggest we take these to Parker. Well, not yet. Cunningham has a big campaign rally downtown tomorrow. So it's a great opportunity to have a little chat with Mistress Mills. You're enjoying this, aren't you? And you're not? Well, um, thanks for coming. <laughs> Gabby, be careful, please. If you need anything, I'm right here. Yeah, thanks you too. <laughs> What are you doing back there? Oh, 
Detective, I'm so sorry I didn't recognize you. I've just been so jumpy lately. Perfectly understandable. You know, I was actually hoping to speak with you, Miss O'Connor. Oh? We received a tip at the night of the fire. You saw someone come back here, is that correct? Yes. You didn't mention that to me when we spoke before. Well, gosh, I didn't think much of seeing Michael in his own yard. It is his house after all. You sure it was him? Oh, we've been friends for years. I couldn't mistake him. Did you see anyone else come back here? Just Michael. Thank you for your time. Yeah, sure. Take care. You too. You do realize this event's gonna be packed, right? Mm-hmm. Press, security, voters. Cunningham's never been more popular. Yeah, that's true. Not to mention, this campaign manager probably won't want to talk about the case. Well, it can't hurt to try. And we'll get coffee on the way there. Riley, I feel like I've seen that car before. Like a couple of times. Riley! Veronica, what are you doing here? I've been worried sick about you. Aren't you going to introduce us? Veronica, this is Gabby Sinclair. Uh, Gabby, Veronica Laskin. Hi there, Gabby. Hi. How do you two know each other? Oh, we live in the same building. <laughs> you rented an apartment? How do you know Riley? I'm his fiance. You're yeah, engaged. Actually, we both <laughs> agreed to call off the engagement. Oh, stop. It's just cold feet. <laughs> Men, am I right? <laughs> totally. You can never trust what they say. Well, Riley works at my father's law firm. Hmm. Daddy even wants to make him partner next year. But it's Riley not... doesn't want anyone to think that it's because he's marrying the boss's daughter. I practically popped the question myself, didn't I? I should let you two catch up. It's nice meeting you, Veronica. It's nice to meet you. Okay, Gabby, wait. She seems nice. We need to talk. He's engaged? Maybe not anymore. It seems complicated. You know, I don't even know why I'm upset. It wouldn't have worked out anyway. He is our neighbor, and that is worse than dating coworker. I'm sorry, Gabby. You guys are so cute together. Shame on him for not telling you earlier. Yeah. Hey, do you want a cinnamon roll? I always save one for myself, but I think you need it today. That sounds good. Ooh. This is Sierra. Oh, hi, Ron. You what? I did? Um, yeah. See you Monday. <gasps> I got it! Nurse number two! Oh my gosh, dear, I knew it. This is all you. No, 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 you keep it, but we have to celebrate tonight. Done. Uh, I'll swing by your place after work. Uh, wear something fab because we're going out. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Or what needs to change to give us hope for the future. And I don't have to tell you that it won't be easy, but I will tell you this. I intend to do everything in my power to bring that change and to give you that hope for a better future for all of us. my country is a dream I've had my whole life, a dream that I, I shared with my wife, Glory. Losing her has been beyond words. Some have suggested that it would be better for me to drop out of this race, to give up, but I made her a promise that I would never give up on our dream 
And I make that same promise to you. Excuse me. If you want to volunteer and make a donation, just check out our website. Actually, I was hoping we could talk. Where did you get those? I guess that answers my first question. What do you want, money? I'm just looking for some answers. Are you a reporter? No, I'm just trying to help a friend. Those pictures were taken last year, before he decided to run. But he was married. Which is why I broke it off. Do you know if Michael had any of their affairs? I don't know. And even if I did, I'm not going to tell you. Well, what about Gloria? Did she know about you? I don't know why you think I'm going to discuss this with you. Well, if you don't, I'm just going to have to ask around and talk to more people to get the answers that I need. She wasn't some trophy wife. She was smart, independent. Some people even thought she should have run for office herself. Trusting Michael was just about her only flaw. What would she have done if she knew about you two? She would have made sure his whole world came crashing down around him. But he would have never let that happen. Okay. Just one more question. The night that Gloria was murdered, Michael contacted a cleaning service to come to the house after the police released it. That was me. Michael was in the hospital. I just wanted to help. Any particular reason you chose Martin's cleaning service? It was the first name that came up when I searched. Good reviews seem legit. Thanks. What are you going to do with those photos? Would you be willing to tell the police everything that you told me? If the information would remain confidential, then yes. But Michael needs to stay completely focused on the election. Okay. So, Cunningham had an affair with his own campaign manager? And she'll make a statement. Confidentially, if she has to. I have a feeling that she wasn't the only woman he was involved with. I can't do anything with feelings, Gabby. And frankly, I've already told you to leave this case Could alone. Could you just hear me out? Please? Okay, so Cunningham had an affair. Gloria found out about it and threatened to go public and ruin his campaign. They were overheard arguing the day of the murder. So after Gil Newsom stopped by, Cunningham realized he had an opportunity to get rid of Gloria and pit it on Newsom. How did you find out about the argument? Neighbors? Then you must have spoken to Newsom. That's exactly what he told us. It's the only way I could get his side of the story. And he claims that he was never inside. The guy's arrested for murder. What do you expect him to say? That's fair. But do you have any forensics to prove that he was in the house? Hairs? Fibers? Anything besides Cunningham's statement? I was in there. I didn't see any signs of forced entry. Cunningham didn't shoot himself. Okay, then maybe he had an accomplice. Someone to make it look convincing to seal the deal on Newsom. Maybe this other woman. And if that other woman wasn't Candace Mills, then who is it? We're back to feelings again, Gabby, and I need evidence. Look, even if I do buy the story, the fact of the matter is, Cunningham was still at the hospital when the fire started. O'Connor might say on record that she saw him, but any smart lawyer is going to point out to the hospital records, which say he wasn't released until the next day. Yeah. Unless there's some other way to prove that he wasn't. What are you talking about? Parker, I think you're a great detective. Flattery won't get you anywhere. <laughs> And I think your police are doing a great job. I will make sure to let them know. But if this was my case, I'd check the hospital security footage. And what makes you think we didn't do that already? Maybe a second look. Anyway, I'll let you get back to work. Thanks for your time. Set your money for the month. Let me know if you need any more. Sorry, I haven't been in touch. It's just things have been crazy. So, anyway, um, I miss you. 
ไป just passing by and saw you here can we talk I think we're pretty much all caught up in the getting to know you department it's not what you think yeah no burning buildings no dead bodies just a fiance you neglected to mention we're not engaged huh okay it's complicated we've been dating I guess working for a father, going to all the family events, things just sort of evolved. How romantic! I like Veronica. Okay, she's nice, but she's not for me. Okay, so you moved here and didn't tell anyone because you didn't want to get married. Here's the truth. I couldn't see myself married to Veronica, working for her dad, any of it. I guess I just, I just got caught up in the momentum of it all. I can relate to that. I tried ten things with Veronica, face it all head on, but she's just not very good with no. I'm sorry. I should have told you all this before, but it's over now. For real this time. I guess everyone deserves a fresh start. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Any time. <laughs> We need to talk. Cunningham. It was you. Stalking me. Taking photos. Harassing my campaign manager. You mean your ex-girlfriend? You're making quite the nuisance of yourself. Yeah, I get that a lot. You think this is funny? I think this is breaking and entering. And if you don't leave right now, I'm calling the police. I wouldn't do that. Or what? You're gonna kill me? Like you killed your wife? That's what this is about. You think I killed Gloria? Yeah, and I can prove it. And that you set your house on fire to cover your tracks. I was at the hospital that night. No, you weren't. I know you left. To meet with my campaign manager. Exactly. You're out of your mind, lady. You get the wrong guy, but either way, I'm not letting your delusions cost me this election. Ah! Oh. Riley, Riley! Gabby, what's the matter? Cunningham was waiting for me. He broke into my apartment. Are you all right? Yes. No, I don't know why. I hit him in the head. You, where is he now? He's still in there. He's knocked out. I'll go check. Don't go in there. There's a murderer inside. You have to call Parker. She'll question him, and, and she'll find out the truth, and we can free Harold. If he gets away, we won't have the chance. Let's go before he comes, too. What did you say you hit him with? Cutting board. Why? What? What is it? Riley, let me in. Gabby, you can't go in there. Cunningham's been stabbed. What are you talking about? All right, Gabby, walk me through this one more time. Cunningham was waiting for me when I got home. Mm-hmm. He threatened me, and then I hit him with a cutting board to get away. But I didn't stab him. Then who did? Don't answer that. It's conjecture. The only explanation is that someone could have come in after I left. I mean, how did he get in anyway? Maybe to the sliding door? So maybe he was followed. You saw those photos. You think that woman could have been angry enough to kill him? That's one possibility. You don't think? Me? 
Look, all I know for sure is that he was found dead in your apartment and you're the only other person there. I can't ignore the facts, Gabby. Unless you have charges to draw against my client, I suggest you refrain from making accusations. I'm just doing my job. Me too. I'll be in touch. Don't leave town. Gabby, I've been so worried. Oh, I'm so sorry I ruined your big day. Oh my gosh, don't even worry about that. What did the police say? They haven't charged Gabby because Cunningham broke in. Whatever happened after that was in self-defense. I didn't stab him. We believe you. What matters right now is what the police believe. And there's no evidence of anyone else in your apartment. There's got to be something. Cunningham said I was after the wrong guy. Maybe he was telling the truth. Don't go back in there tonight, please. She can stay at my place tonight. Nurse number two will take good care of you. Thanks. Come here. Somehow you keep showing up at the right time. Thanks. Again. Anytime. I'll check in you later, okay? Yeah, see you later. Come on, I'll make you some tea. What are you doing here? You've got to give this up, Gabby. Cunningham is dead. Case closed. Whoever killed him is still out there, and Cunningham was right. I was after the wrong person. There's still a missing puzzle piece, and I need to find it. No way, Jose. I'm not letting you out of here. Not alone. You don't mean... Yesterday, I was cast as nurse number two. My first ever role in a community theater production after... Who knows how many years of trying. Right now, I feel like I could do just about anything. Even help you find that missing puzzle piece. It might be dangerous. Good. <laughs> Let's go. Tell me again what it is you're looking for. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'll know when I find it. And you're sure breaking and entering is a good idea right now? There's no breaking, only entering. I just need to look around and see if there's a key or an open window or some way in. Okay, fine, just be careful. I will. Keep a lookout. If you see anything weird, text me, okay? Yes, ma'am. Ooh, how was that one? That was the best one yet. <laughs> Gabby? Sierra?
Hi, Riley. See here. Is Gabby with you? Yes. We're at the Cunninghams. I'm on my way. for his old gas lawnmower. No gas cans. Gabby? What are you doing? Riley, what are you doing here? Thanks for the text, Sierra. Uh, Parker finds out you came back I'm here. I'm about to tell her myself. Uh, are you crazy? She's gonna be really interested in what I just discovered. Which is? Riley! Get up. Barbara. You don't seem surprised to see me. Michael didn't kill Gloria. It was you. Such a bright young thing you are. Where's the two of you having an affair? It wasn't some cheap fling. It was love. I divorced my husband for him. And he was supposed to leave Gloria too, only, only he never did. And then you snuck into their house and shot Gloria in her bed. Best way to go if you ask me. I don't think Gloria would agree. You know, Michael came home and he would have figured out I killed her if I hadn't shot him too. And after the investigation, you brought the gun back into the house to frame Michael? Yes. He deserved it after how he treated me. But why the fire? It would have been the perfect cover-up for a renewed investigation if you had stepped in and messed it up. And the photographs? And the story about the lawnmower? I let you, like a dog. And when I got too close to the truth, you improvised and killed the man that you used to love. You should thank me. I made it look like self-defense. And now? And now, I think it's time Curiosity killed the cat. Aren't you missing one of your pearl earrings? I left it for Parker. She'll figure out where it came from. Who's to say you didn't plan it there to frame me, huh? Barbara, let's just talk about this, okay? I'm done listening. <clears throat> Cute. Not too bright. No! You okay? Yeah. Go, Parker. Sierra, you were supposed to text. I thought my performance was a real showstopper. <laughs> You're gonna look real good in orange. With Nancy Drew here? You know, just because everything turned out okay doesn't mean I can't arrest you for interfering with the investigation. On the other hand, maybe I'll let you tell Harold the good news. Thanks to your meddling, he's a free man now. <laughs> Thanks, Detective. Maybe the department can use someone with your skills if you're interested. <laughs> Absolutely. Come see me next week. Okay. <sighs> Sounds like you might have a new career choice after all. Maybe. I'll have to talk to Harold first. Well, I uh, guess it's all over. Are you leaving the city? I meant the case. Oh, right. <laughs> hey, um, you remember when we talked about you going back to school mm -hmm. and I said that it's never too late to change? Otherwise, you'd always wonder. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of that lately. Worrying about what I want, who I am. I really wasn't sure about the answer until I met you. Me? I like the idea of being someone who can help people when they need it most. Thought it might be nice to give it a try. Oh, huh. so you're sticking around? Uh, if it would give us a chance to get to know each other a little better. I mean, you know, if you're interested. I might be.
I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not a mystery person, but I love a good romance. <laughs> oh. Well, it ain't a ball game, but uh, I'm gonna go see about some pizza crack injection. What do you think? I'm good. Matlock? <laughs> I'm fine, Harold. Thanks. You know, I'm gonna get you two some popcorn. You're gonna need it later, trust me. <laughs> <Kay>! <laughs> I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> These are for you. Uh, Riley, you shouldn't have. Oh, no, really, there's no space in the dressing room. I've been locked in bigger broom closets. When were you locked in a broom closet? We'll hold on some until after the show. Break a leg. Oh, thanks! You too! <laughs> Thank you. Shall we? After you. St. 